As you might have seen from my last couple of videos, R2 is finally mobile. I managed to put the finishing touches on the electronic system, and we ventured outside for the first time for a quick spin around the driveway, and then hit the road for a couple of visits around town. Uh, really, there wasn't a whole lot left to do after the last electronics video, but I thought I'd post a final wrap-up video to go over the final few items that were on the to-do list. First off was mounting my main power switch behind the front of the skirt. To do this, I used Fusion 360 to design this custom cradle that fits the Blue Seas breaker switch and bolts securely to the skirt. I made sure the switch sat flush with the bottom of the skirt so there's no risk of damage whenever R2 is sitting on the floor without legs. I've added this file to my printables.com page. The link is in the description. Next was to add in the last length of wiring for the regeneration lines. It's important to note that not every droid uses regeneration lines like these. This is just one approach to dealing with the issue of regeneration current. So what is regeneration current? Well, essentially all electric motors are also generators. Just as applying power will make the motor spin, spinning the motor will generate power. This power will propagate back through whatever electrical system the motor is connected to. Now when the droid is powered on, even though the motors are connected to the motor controllers, bus bars, fuse blocks, etc., the path of least resistance will always be back to the batteries where the power can be safely deposited and as a bonus will slightly recharge the batteries. But what happens when the batteries are removed, or if the main power is turned off, thus opening the circuit and no longer providing a path back to the battery? Well, the generated power still travels upstream, but now it will build up and force its way, for lack of a better term, into the electronic components, the first of which is going to be the Sabertooth motor controller. Too much current buildup and you will fry the motor controller. So what can you do when you need to push R2 when he's turned off? There are several approaches. You can physically isolate the motors from the saber tooth, whether it's by actually disconnecting wires or by adding a switch between each motor and the motor controller. Something like this toggle switch, this is a 12 volt 30 amp, which would equate to a 15 amp switch for my 24 volt system would probably work just fine. Of course, this means you need to remember to flip the switch before pushing R2 after he's been powered down. You could add relays, kind of like this one, between the saber tooth and each of the motors. A relay is basically a switch that is opened automatically as soon as power is lost. This avoids the need to manually flip switches, but relays constantly draw a small current to keep them closed while R2 is turned on. And wiring them can be a bit tricky, as each relay requires a flyback diode to prevent backflow of current when the relay is activated. Switches and relays are both perfectly valid solutions, and if this is the direction you decide to go, then please research the pros and cons and find implementation details online at astromech.net. For my droid, I chose to run a secondary power line for each motor from the motor controller directly back to the battery, bypassing the main power switch. With this approach, even when R2 is turned off, there's still a path back to the battery for the regeneration current. I don't need to remember to flip any switches, and there's no current draw happening while R2 is running. As long as my batteries are connected, I can't fry my motor controller by pushing R2. However, this approach does require that we add diodes near the battery to ensure only one-way current flow back to the batteries and not out from the batteries into the motors. Diodes are one-way gates for electricity, the band being closest to the output side of the diode. When choosing a diode, it's important to consider both the voltage and amperage they may be subjected to. Tiny diodes like these are 40 volts, which is fine for my 24-volt system, but they're only rated for 1 amp. My motors will draw on average just over 6 amps under typical conditions. I decided to double that round up and add a little bit of extra, very precise, and ended up going with these 20 amp Schottky style diodes. But the 20 amps should be more than, more than adequate to uh, support any sort of uh, regeneration current that I might encounter. So what I ended up doing was I created this little patch cable. Um, this end here connects to the regeneration plug at the bottom of my electronics board. I soldered in line the 20 amp diodes and I also 
wrapped them in shrink wrap and marked the, the banded end just so I knew what this was. And then I had this end in a quick connect uh, terminal right here. And if we look at the battery cable that I have for the positive terminal on my battery, um, I got some of these piggyback style connectors. So it makes it really easy for me to just hook the regeneration current right back to the positive battery terminal. And that was pretty much it. Uh, with that now, um, I can safely push R2 uh, as long as the batteries are in there. Uh, the only consideration is that if I do take the batteries out of R2, I need to make sure that I physically disconnect the uh, motors from the electronics board. And in my case, since the taking out the batteries requires me to go in through the top of R2, I don't anticipate that being a problem or something that I'm going to inadvertently forget to do. Uh, I'll just make sure that I always disconnect the motors and I should be good. So the final implementation of the regeneration lines, we have the positive leads for each of the motors on the motor controller branch off. And those run behind the board to the connector down at the bottom where my patch cable then ties those regeneration lines back to the positive lead on the battery. And really that's the last piece of the electronics uh, build process. I did add a USB cable uh, and that actually feeds directly to the charge bay. I have a USB connector there and I've already been able to connect my laptop uh, and do some code updates on Arduino. I'll be posting some videos on that process as I get deeper into customizing the shadow code. But uh, yeah, this pretty much wraps up the electronics build. Um, I know it's a little unconventional. I never had any sort of electronics schematic or wiring diagram. I just kind of built it as it made sense to me and uh, the end result seems to be working. So thanks everyone for watching this series. I hope this helps someone else with their build and um, I'll be posting some other updates in the coming months as I add some more stuff to R2. Thanks for watching.